Hey everyone, welcome to your next section in this programming series. We're going to start talking about modules, which build the foundation for more complex applications. Because eventually you're not just going to want to program everything in one giant file. You need to break it out into numerous files. Plus there's modules out there that we can import in our project and use. There are some built in and you can also download some off the internet. So one module we've seen is the math module. So to do that, you just say import math. And that is how you import any modules. You just say import and then the name of the module. This gives us access to a bunch of stuff inside of this module. You access it by putting the module name and then whatever thing you're trying to access. So for example, you could do square root and that's a method so you could pass some data in here. And when you import a module, you're gonna access all the data using that dot operator. That's because the modules are imported as a special object of type module. So just to show you guys this, you can say print type and then put math. And running this, you get type module here. So anytime we're accessing functions on an object, so math dot something, the, the word for this is a method. You may also hear them called functions, really doesn't matter a whole lot, just methods and functions are essentially the same thing. Methods just come after a dot on some object. So I'm not here to talk about object-oriented programming. Let's get back to modules, but just thought I'd throw that as a side note. There's a lot of different modules you can use. So for example, we can say import Q, that's a module. There's pickle, which is a pretty cool name. Um, we can import, mm, I don't know, random. There's just so many modules we can use. There's heap Q, which is a data structure. You can import JSON for working for JSON data. And I'm not trying to teach you guys all of the modules here. The point is there's lots of different things that we can pull into our code. We don't always have to recreate the wheel. So where are these things even coming from? Well, you can actually find out by saying something like, let's go with random and then you can print random. So pass random into a print function and hit run. And it says module random from, and then gives us a path. So I'm going to open this and check it out, it shows us this file. And this comes from this folder here, so what I wanna do is I actually wanna open this inside of the finder window or the folder structure on Windows, whatever it is. So copy this file path and let's navigate to it. So we'll just go into finder and go to go, go to folder, and then paste in that file structure. And then I left off the file name, so we're going to the Python 3.8 folder. Hit enter. And holy crap, look at all that junk. So let's look at this in a little bit cleaner way. So these are all of the different modules that we can use in our code. So as an example in here, we had random. That's the one we're working with right now. It's right there. There's the JSON one I showed you guys. So you can go in here and find that if you want. I always have to start at A to do the alphabet to figure out where it is. So A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J. Right there, that's actually a folder. And we're gonna get into the folders, how those work in this section as well. But most of these are just py files. So let's go back to our code and let's work with this random module for a second. We're not gonna go into it in super good detail, but just to show you guys how to use it, you can do something like random dot and then access some member such as rand int. And this is a method, so what we can do is we can pass in a starting number and an ending number. So we could say 0, 10 and run this and check it out, we get zero. And every time we run this, we get some random number. Anywhere from zero up to 10 inclusive. So that is how you would use a member of this random module. And if you want, you can go into that module and see how this code works. So let's go into random.py. And I think this is actually, if I recall from memory, oh, what is it? I think it's line 244. Uh, so let's go take a look, see if we can find it down there. And, oh yeah, definitely. All right, so this is how it works. It uses this other function here, rand range. So it's really not anything too crazy, but pretty much it takes the number you pass in and it looks like random range is exclusive. So it puts a plus one there. So that way it's inclusive and it returns a random integer in this range. The square brackets mean inclusive as opposed to the parentheses, which is exclusive. So that's how that works. Also note the triple quote comment, that's cool to see. So yeah, you can explore your modules, figure out how they work just like that. Another thing you can do is if you're working with it in your code, 
you can hold command on Windows and you can hover over stuff and see how it works or you can click it to open that file. On Windows it might be control, not entirely sure, but just push buttons until you get some pop-ups and it should work. Now another thing I wanna just make sure is super clear, what is a module? It is literally just a Python file. So we can create a Python file and import it into our code as a module. It only becomes a module once we import it. We don't have to do anything special, create like a new module structure or anything like that. It's just a file. And when you have this file, you can be very specific about how you want to expose all the inner data and what you want to be available. So I'll go through an example of how the internals are abstracted away by taking a look at something inside of this random module. So I think it's on line 700 something. Right here on 786, you can see that anytime we invoke one of these, such as randint, it's actually invoking inst.randint, which is a new random object. So this is kind of an abstraction behind the scenes. It's creating a new random object and invoking a method on that object, but we just use it directly on this module, random.randint. But you can see the description here. It's easier for the casual user than making them instantiate their own random instance. If they didn't do this, the way we would invoke this would be a little bit different. It'd probably look like this. We'd create some variable and then say random dot random, create that. And then we would say obj dot randint. So it's just one less step we have to worry about because the module took care of that for us. So just know that behind the scenes, some stuff might be happening and they're gonna make it as easy as possible for us to work with these modules. Also, when working with modules, you can control what's visible through a special list. So I'll show you that here. I'm just gonna search for it, underscore, underscore, all. And this is pretty much everything that we can use in this module. So you can probably see modules can get fairly complex. Obviously, the ones that are built in have all of the bells and whistles. The modules we'll be creating are probably gonna be pretty simple, but we're gonna do our best to cover what is needed to start building more complex apps. So I'm excited. Stay tuned for the next video because I'm going to be teaching you another way of importing modules that you'll probably end up seeing. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe.